Hey Shibi Doolers, how are you doing? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I turned this little beetle that crossed my path yesterday. I took some photos and things, had a look at it, determined sort of shapes in there, uh, and thought, how can I use those shapes and kind of work on them to create a character you might have in an animation or a children's book or something like that. I'm gonna show you how I analyze the photographs and then sort of sketch out some ideas and then sort of more firmly sketch out a plan for a drawing in pencil, how I then ink it in and then finally color it in with watercolor. But let's not talk about it. Let's do it. Took these photos of these, this beetle and there are little things that I really quite like. So you've got this kind of triangle section thing going on there. And when you take a closer look at the leg, You've also got this kind of triangular, um, sort of curvy triangular thing going on. I, I, I like those curves as well there. And you can just see in here, they've got this kind of curvy triangular thing and a nice sort of seam <laughs> along there. Again, you can see at the front here, you've got this sort of triangular thing going on and this great big claw at the front. And uh, look at that one there. And now it hasn't got any antennae popping out of its head, but look, there are antennae popping out of its <laughs> the front of its claw there, which is a little weird. It's like having your nose on your hand or something like that. And these beautiful little claws on the side there. So there's this gorgeous sort of shape there. And again, we've got this triangle thing going on here. So there's a definite kind of triangle kind of shape curved triangles aren't they like that and again here if we we look we've got this kind of thing going on there and they're, they're, they're a bit like sort of flared trousers aren't they in a way or something i imagine flash gordon would wear um or there's sort of speed skiers and things like that stiff flared trousers that will kind of be aerodynamic as you're zooming down the ski slopes these are some sketches that kind of start off a little bit weird um trying to work it out from the back uh, thinking I, I thought I might have a cloak or something like Darth Vader-ish and then and then I really got into this triangle thing I've got to think about the the face so the head is I'm just going to have as a kind of a circle and and I can see these sort of triangles it gives you quite a, a mean look doesn't it and if we put some eyeballs in the middle then um, and shade around the outside I really like circular eyes because you can place the eyeball dot wherever you like it so you can have him sort of looking over there and I found it really interesting also that if you bring in another triangle for the mouth so we've kind of got a triangular theme going on here um, then if you put the mouth in there that makes that look quite aggressive and I also like this sort of curve because you can bring that up into an antennae even though this particular beetle doesn't have antennae it just gives it that sort of nurse doesn't it and you can sort of think about where you're going to have the body coming out so if you put the shoulders really high it kind of makes him look more uh, sinister I think um, <laughs> and and we can sort of have maybe like these sort of the cowls that are there on the top and we can bring that around there and then a sort of a stripy <laughs> convict um, vest like that and then we'd have to work out quite where the arms are going to come out from here but let's just stick them out there for the moment and and then we want these nice sort of triangular <laughs> shapes and a horn sort of claw sticking out the side there I'm going to take those kind of jagged edgy things that are actually sort of going along there but I'm going to turn them then into sort of claw fingers claw fingers and <laughs> make him kind of look like that and we'll put some legs in there and again we've got these great big kind of flares and what I thought was to make them sort of curved down that way so that we can then have some kind of shoes or feet sort of sticking out from underneath like that. We could put a little bit of shading in there too. And there you have uh, your basic character. And, and while I was doing those previous sketches, uh, playing around with these sort of eyes, I thought to myself, what happens if we turn the triangle the other way up? And 
although we've got this sort of slightly manic evil sort of curve of an eyebrow you kind of look there the the smile then turns it into something quite different and also we could put a little bit of something like that it makes him look a bit sleepier so there's lots of ways of sort of creating character and i thought you know we're going to need a name for this beetle and and obviously john Joel, george paul and ringo comes to mind and i thought well how, how do we work those out and again you see so if you have sort of really bright eyes sort of like that and and a big kind of smile like that then that's very much more sort of oh hi you know yeah i'm paul how are you doing whereas if, if we do the eyes a bit more kind of hooded like that with a slightly more sort of cynical kind of a mouth and say, oh all right hello i'm john here <laughs> it's, it's a bit more a bit more of a depressed kind of a look to the whole thing so that's that's a birmingham accent so it's not liverpool so with just the way you do the eyes and turn the, the, the mouth into a triangle up or a triangle down you can create completely different characters i've got myself a bit of watercolor paper here and what have we got we've got a kind of a circle and when you're designing characters you really want to be able to simplify things um, as easily as possible into so we're going to have kind of triangle triangle curve thumb um legs coming out triangle <laughs> and these are things, you know, I always say practice, practice, practice. And when you're doing characters, you just have to practice and draw them again and again and again. So that, you, that yeah, that wants to go that way. So so you kind of get the the feel for the thing. And, and that is your sort of basic plan. And I think we can draw in. So if we draw in the circle. And, and in fact, I'm going to do something like this just to make it a little more evil join them up and then we can bring that across it makes it look uh, <laughs> a little bit more <laughs> evil and let's have that kind of a mouth <laughs> now here i'm going to draw these um big sort of hands aren't they really is what they are and big sort of thumbs big claw thumbs <laughs> so we want sort of four along there so we're really anthropomorphizing and turning them into hands rather than sort of beetle claws and then we can bring the um <laughs> arms up to there and then have some kind of <laughs> thing coming out of their t-shirt um like that so we can bring that around and so that would be the top and we want like that sort of seam thing that went all around the whole thing there and then we can just put these little sort of curves one two three we'll assume that that's sort of going off somewhere uh, one two uh, one two three yeah and four like that so that we can then sort of bring these stripey sort of stomachy thing like that but we want this nice sort of curve around the back and then these legs are going to drop down there and again we're going to have the uh, uh yeah wait a minute i'm going to do it like this and then give it a bit more aerodynamic i'm going to do that kind of thing there and give that sort of flash gordon look to the whole thing it's kind of echoing these fingers coming out like that and then these are just going to be his shoes underneath which i don't know how they've got some kind of stripey thing going on there and then we'll want to continue that around the back i think we can put some shading in there or maybe another bit there little bit of shading in there and there something going on underneath that one and underneath that one and I think we can put some shading up at the top there I think I probably wish I'd done, <laughs> done it on the bottom but never mind we'll do it like that we'll do a bit in there and we're going to do a bit of shading 
around there and we want some sort of hard shading in there like that and we want some shading in underneath the boot but we'll do that in the coloring I think um, and if we want we could maybe put a bit of sort of shading on the ground like that maybe a horizon line and then when you are absolutely sure that the ink is dry you can erase those pencil lines and no one will ever know <laughs> that you did any planning when it comes to drawing characters in, in picture books whatever it's consistency is really important and it's that underdrawing it's those those basic shapes that you can then twist the character around and do in all sorts of different angles it's that basic underdrawing which gets you ahead of the game so i'm going to be using mostly this kind of prussian blue and leave a little um, circle up there and then i think i'm going to so i'm using this pentel aquash brush the water is in the handle i've said there's so many things so the, the water keeps sort of pouring down the handle um, and i'm just going to get a little bit more and just sort of drop that in around there let's make that a bit darker around there but it's making it a bit more blue really isn't it so you can kind of push the watercolor around and then we're going to do similar things along here i really should have put the shading down below so, <laughs> so this is you know what the second time i've sort of fully drawn this potential character and it's those kind of things that you learn you think oh i should have put the shading down there and there's so many little things that you, you get used to it's each time you do it it becomes um, a habit and it's sort of creating those forming those sort of habitual movements so it's a kind of muscle memory that you know the more you draw a character the more it, it isn't just your brain that's drawing it it's the <laughs> your hand has its own kind of memory the muscles have their own kind of memory and and they just sort of do it for you and then you just if you draw it over and over and over and over again and that's the best way to really sort of get that continuity in characters is to draw them again and again now i'm going to drop in some stronger blue while it's still wet so you get that smooth transition of um, colour and tone as well. Have a bit more underneath there. Um, and, and basically I'm just painting in, in Prussian blue here really so I'll just do a bit more up there. And I'll just put those little bits there as kind of shade. Do a little bit underneath there and I think it should be mostly underneath there. So I put those little flicks across there as shade clean the brush uh, clean the brush and then just take that up to there like that I'm going to draw this these segments in a paler blue so which it isn't really paler I've just added more water really just thinned it down and leaving a little shiny space there a little line of shininess and similar down there and and again we can i'm going to add a little bit of neutral tint just to make that a bit more gray and i'm going to drop that in just to give it that kind of sort of pillow like look that sort of pillow emboss look let's do the same thing down here and we'll draw those little fins and that highlight there and I'm wondering about the shoes whether they should be something completely different and you get that sort of blue green thing don't you in, um, in Beatles so I'm thinking maybe I'm going to give him green boots just to make it <laughs> a little bit different and you get that you know quite startling green blue sort of shimmer don't you on a on a black beetle sometimes and we can maybe even put you know green around there for some reason why not a 
again I'm going to put some more solid color in there just to give that a sort of a tonal difference cleaning the brush and then I'm going to wash them into there and I'll do the same on this side so a lot of this is just experimenting and seeing what happens if I try doing this and try doing that. And, it, uh, and again, that is the thing about characters. It's, if you're going to do a character in a book or something like that, you know, you've really got to get to know them to, to, to get that consistency. <laughs> I keep saying consistency. But consistency is really important. Um, to, to you know to make a whole book or animation or whatever work that every time a character comes on from whatever angle you know who that character is and so to be able to draw it properly there's a little bit of sort of shadow there sort of sunlight shadow to be able to draw it that way each time it is practice I'm going on about practice because <laughs> that is really the secret so let's give him some so the yellow eyes and I'm just going to put a little bit of blob of red in there and now I'm going to do the back because I think his his carapace around the back is going to be dark and it's funny the more I think about it and look at it there's obviously a bit of a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle kind of vibe going on here which might be because I've seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the background but I certainly didn't have it in mind while I was designing the character and this sort of outlaw stripe across his face has not come from the the, the mutant the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles it's, it's definitely come from the beetle itself isn't it if you, if you watch the progression of the whole thing but you might reach a point where you think that's getting to look too much like <laughs> the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and in which case uh, you probably want to go back and think about the whole thing from the start. But I think these kind of claw hands um, make quite a difference to the whole thing. Again, using a neutral tent, I'll just put a bit of sort of shadow on the ground there. And that's basically it. I think, I think we can take that down a little bit. If we want, we can have some kind of uh, 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 kind of marks. I know sometimes my editors, <laughs> art editors, used to accuse me of putting too much of these lines in. I used to try and take them out without me watching. I'm going to dry this. You could possibly make this a little more interesting just by having little red spots on the end there. Maybe just a little bit of an angry red lips. And I'm going to add a bit more shading with this um, neutral tint just to sort of bring things forward a bit more. I think we'll have a bit more shading there, a bit more shading. And just these little blobs across there. A bit more under there. And I think I think we're gonna do a little bit there. A little bit there. And we'll make this a bit sort of darker around that side. And we need some shading on the shoes under there as well I think. And we can make that shading a bit more. I think we can maybe make that quite dark. Oh, that's very dark. Hang on. <laughs> Just thin that down a bit. Like that. Well, that seems like a good point to stop that illustration. And I hope you enjoyed that and learned lots of little bits along the way. Uh, as I say, the, the secret is practice. And, and also, I think it's that building up that muscle memory. Uh, your hands, your muscles... Uh, a part of your brain as well and they kind of learn how to create characters but you've got to keep practicing and drawing them again and again and again if you did learn something from that click down there and make sure you are subscribed to the shoe raider drawing channel and keep coming back for lots more drawing videos every week in the meantime keep drawing 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 practice 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 and i'll see you next time you take care now bye bye